Okay, so we've got a forest. The value grows slow at first, then quickly, then it will stop growing. In the previous videos, we looked at how to find the optimal rotation age to maximize the amount of money we're making. Now let's play with some of these factors and see how they affect when we want to harvest. Remember on this graph, this is the interest rate and this is the percent by which the value of the forest will grow this year, given as the incremental growth and in stumpage divided by the total stumpage. Where they meet is where the value of the forest is increasing by the same rate as whatever we're comparing it to. In this case, the interest rate. This is the optimal rotation age to maximize the present value. If the interest rate were to increase, it's going to push that date earlier. The other areas we can invest in are relatively more profitable, so it's better to sell the trees earlier and just invest in those other things. If the interest rate was lower, the opposite situation, the rate the stumpage value grows at is relatively greater, so we want to keep the forest growing. Let's say we have another cost. Let's say there's a replanting cost in the same year that we sell the stumpage. The way this shows on the graph is that we will have to add a cost here. We'll just call it R for replanting. This is whenever we harvest and gain the stumpage value, we're also going to have to pay this cost. Since we're subtracting a number, it's always going to make this bottom here smaller. And so dividing by a smaller number, it's always going to make this whole term bigger. On the graph, the line is going to be pushed up and to the right. The end result is the optimal rotation age becoming later. Intuitively, this is probably easier to understand as if replanting is expensive, then replant as little as possible. Let the forests grow a bit to try to balance out those replanting costs. Before we go any further, it's important to understand what things don't affect the rotation age. Replanting costs does affect it, because how much replanting costs we have to pay depends on how often we harvest. But a cost that comes every year, let's say like a land tax, that's just always the same, doesn't matter how much we harvest, we're still gonna have to pay the same amount of money. So it doesn't affect the optimal rotation decision. I mean, they may affect whether we keep using this forest for forestry, if these costs are very, very high, we may choose to get out of this whole forestry thing, but they won't affect the age rotation. How about if the price was higher? Would they harvest at a different age? They wouldn't. It's a bit harder to visualize compared to a land tax, but let's look what happens. Let's split delta S, the change in stumpage, into the stumpage value next year minus the stumpage value this year. Because the price is higher, the stumpage value this year is going to be higher, and the stumpage value next year is going to be higher. But by a proportional amount, such that the whole thing and this line isn't going to change. At least not based on the factors we're looking at here. We've left out the opportunity cost on land, which actually does affect what we're talking about here. But let's say the price of wood were expected to constantly change over time. If it steadily increased, it would lengthen the harvest age. Intuitively, if the amount of money the forester can make next year is so much greater than this year, then they're going to wait a little bit longer. Maybe even if the forest had stopped growing. Looking at this equation, it's kind of like this term here, the stumpage value next year is always relatively bigger than the stumpage value this year. So it pushes the line up and pushes the optimal rotation age later. If the price of wood was expected to decrease, it would have the opposite effect and push the line down. Okay, so everything in this series so far has been from the perspective of a private firm, a single company or owner. But if we look at it from the perspective of everyone, there are things missing from this. When a forest is cut, it can get rid of stuff like hunting, carbon sequestration, food security, flood control, and water quality. An individual or private firm probably won't take this stuff into account. If they don't, it can be an externality. So let's look at the decision to cut again, but factoring in these values. Actually, we already sort of know what's going to happen. We can model these as a benefit that is gained by growing the forest by another year that makes the top part of this equation bigger, or the loss of a benefit or an opportunity cost that is paid at harvest, decreasing the bottom part of this equation. Either way, it's making this whole term bigger, lengthening the optimal rotation age. Thinking about it in basic terms, if the forest is providing these other benefits, then letting it stand longer or even permanently would be better. These values will come at different times depending on the situation. Carbon sequestration values will start at the very beginning and probably continue past when the net growth equals zero as the soil continues to build up with carbon. Value from hunting may be available the whole time but may only show up in a younger forest and it may actually push the harvest age sooner if a young forest has that value. Water purification and flood control will come with soil structure and any ground cover that blocks the impact from falling rain. Sometimes a balance is struck between these things and wood production but where deforestation is a problem we'll have to look at changes in policy to try to remedy it.